Hello and welcome back to another edition of your Interplay Learning Trades Tuesday. Brought to you here by myself, Craig Carter, and the team here at Interplay Learning. We wanted to dive in today in regards to some questions that we get. Surprisingly enough, we get a lot of similar questions when it comes to virtual reality training for uh, using our HVAC product. So we compiled a list here, got to put together a fun little list of post-it notes here to go over some of these questions. So let's dive in here today. The first one, and probably one of the most critical ones, is, is how does it compare to real life training? Now, it, you know, in some ways that could be a, an ambiguous question, but oftentimes uh, you know, at the core of virtual reality training is still our sim-based approach, meaning we are able to do so many different scenarios in a shorter period of time. So compared to many real life training scenarios, we actually can provide, you know, in a shorter period of time to use a rapid fire statement again, we can get that hands-on like training, that repetitions that do build that experiential learning. You know, in addition though, oftentimes in real life training, we are faced with a group learning environment. So imagine you've got either somebody in front of a classroom talking or in front of a group of people talking or you've actually got one piece of live equipment and a whole bunch of technicians or maybe even just five or six technicians peering over the shoulder. Something we call, you know, the issue of, of, the, of the one tech, two shoulders problem. What does everybody do uh, in a training environment when one person is actually trying to work on the equipment? You know, you've got a whole lot of people that really have nothing to do. And that's actually something that virtual reality-based training does allow for. It at least allows for the visualization and engagement of every single person who is at the training right now. So, you know, just like how we always end up having our VR up on the big screen here, it's a very easy way to engage all the learners. One of the things that we've also found out in regards to virtual reality training is it actually ends up being a whole lot more like when the Nintendo Wii came out and it created a group, you know, kind of fun, engaging video game environment. Virtual reality, even though you only have one person in the headset at a time, it actually creates a very communicative group learning environment. You have one person who might be going through it, but you have other people asking them the questions. There's actually a call and response oftentimes. And the most critical part about it is, is then the next person goes into it. We've all been through some online PowerPoint training, or we've been through, uh, you know, watch somebody do a death by PowerPoint presentation, and then nobody said, hey, let's go dive into and do the exact same thing again. We certainly know when it comes to VR training that there's actually, you know, there's something to be said for getting more people into the same training over and over again because, you know, there's the person that's next to them wants to dive into what the other person in VR just did. And so there actually is some, some science there with, with that group learning environment and getting more people to do the training. Uh, a couple other things I wanted to cover is until you put on the VR headset, you know, there is a level of immersion like you've never ever experienced before. And that is why we do what we do, because we do know that this just creates a learning environment that almost is second to none. And lastly, we do believe very you know, wholeheartedly in the ability for hands-on training, but sometimes it's just, it's not possible. You know, especially younger techs these days, all they say is teach me hands-on. It is almost impossible to teach them all these different scenarios in a hands-on atmosphere. And that's actually where a virtual reality environment does provide some benefits. Now, other question we get is, does it replace in the field training? And, you know, my standard approach to this is by no means does it ever replace in the field training. My belief is always, and our belief here is, how do you create a perfect amount of both on the job in the field training, plus, you know, additional core training curriculum to build foundational knowledge, plus simulation-based learning, in order to build, uh, you know, to build that experiential, you know, that experiential knowledge that you're also then going to be practicing in the field as well. And so it's that perfect conversion of all those that actually does help you create text in a, in a shorter period of time that in, in the end end up being more productive. And VR is just one of those elements that you can use as you integrate into that training program. Ooh, I was excited to throw my cards when my questions were done. So there we go. I just got to do it. I got to do it twice. I meant to do it the first time around. So let's actually dive into how much does VR cost. Now, just like anything, when you're dealing with technology, 
you know, you've got, you know, there's cars that can get you from A to B, there's cars that can get you to A to B, you know, in a whole lot of style, you know, there's always different price points with anything you do, especially with VR, the main price point differential that you're dealing with here is the, you know, whether you go with a desktop or a laptop, is mobility important? Uh, or do you just gonna set up your 10 foot training area and you're gonna put a desktop there and it's never gonna move? Or you need a laptop because you actually plan on moving this from place to place to place? Clearly, desktop versus laptop is gonna be one pricing driver. Uh, though, to be honest, we've got $1,200 laptops and we have $1,000 desktops that can drive all of our VR very well. So to think, you know, that main cost that you're looking at is gonna be a VR ready computer that they really can go from $1,000 to $3,000, just like anything in the life. You got different, different versions. Uh, and then in the end, the headset is pretty much your other main requirement that you're going to need. And everything that we have here from these, in this HTC Vive, from these base stations up top to this headset and, 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 the, and, and our hand controls, you know, all that comes together for $500. Um, so you combine that. $1,000, $1,200, $1,500 dollar computer, $500 dollar headset, you know, we can get you up and running on VR with anywhere from as low as $1,800 bucks to $2,000. Uh, we also do have, and maybe we can peer in, we do work on some mobility solutions as well, uh, and that's going to increase the price point if we, if we do add some, something like a Pelican case to that whole package. And we always do help support you in that, whether we're, whether you're accessing it through us or whether we're just supporting you and saying, hey, I think this is a good option. You can go to Best Buy and buy it, you know, trust me. We're not in the hardware game, we're in the software game. Um, and that actually is, you know, one other thing that clearly, as I mentioned that, you know, hey, what all are you gonna need for VR? Clearly you're gonna need access to your Interplay software to get all that going. But in the end, when you purchase an Interplay learning package, the VR is there, the VR access is there. Uh, you don't need to buy the VR extra package or something like that. You just, as soon as you get the VR hardware, you're good to go. Um, okay, maybe I just dove in a little bit to my next question, rats. So what all is needed to get started? Clearly the hardware we just talked about and that Interplay Learning account is going to be most important. And just note that you always can use it not just in VR, you can access via uh, any videos via mobile, uh, you can be doing all of our sim-based training via just a regular old click and mouse like, you know, the old fashioned way, but clearly there's some great benefits there too, and you get access to all of that through your Interplay Learning account. Uh, so is it hard to set up? All right, and maybe I'll then piggyback on that is, you know, what's all needed in the setup process. The first thing I do is go find your, at your company, go find I'm not even going to use the term nerdy gamer, but go find the gamer that you know, hey, you might even have a VR headset at home. Certainly, you know, is pretty savvy with computers, and, and I always just suggest that you make that person kind of the VR go-to guy and, and or gal. And once you get that person integrated, give them a little more responsibility. They're going to take ownership, and one, they're going to get this thing set up a whole lot faster than probably you or I ever would. Uh, but it actually creates a little buy-in amongst the company, and, and I actually think it, it ends up creating a better scenario. But in the end, they have made this pretty darn simple. I'm not going to say it's, it'll probably take an hour. We've got a new list of five videos on our YouTube page that breaks down in pretty thorough detail everything from unboxing a computer, setting up a brand new Windows account, all the way to setting up something here that we use to drive the training called Steam VR. So, you know, there certainly are going to be a few things you've got to download to your computer to get up and running, you know, including your Interplay VR training app or your Interplay uh, training app. You're going to get that up and running. Uh, but in the end, give yourself about an hour. If you do ever hit any roadblocks, clearly reach out to us at Interplay and we'll do our best to uh, get you going on that front. You know, we, we, we do enough VR setup around here on our end that we're pretty savvy at it. So, last but not least, and maybe the, you know, having been around enough events with VR and people that have never tried it before, people that are just looky-loos that aren't ever going to get in the VR, you know, they all think that there's a chance that they're going to get nauseous. And in some ways, I'm actually thinking that that's it certainly is something that occurs, uh, and I will always note that as V 
VR hardware gets more advanced as the resolution gets better as you know companies like us at Interplay get better at making our VR experience, that nausea issue becomes less and less and less of a concern. Now, you know, is, it, is VR something that you're gonna be in for three hours every single day? Some people can do it, some people can't. The good news is, is that a lot of our training is actually kind of created for little bite-sized chunks where in the end, I've never heard people uh, and people that use our stuff all the time do not have massive nausea issues. So um, to that, I'm very confident and that actually goes to our development team and things that they do and work very hard on. And as well, you know, the hardware suggestions that we provide you are certain adequate capabilities that actually are one of the, the main driver to reducing any nausea issues. A lot of that comes from people that are using, you know, inferior computers that really aren't you know, made to, to push through and, and drive full immersive VR. Uh, so that's basically all my questions that I got. Is there anything, hopefully not too difficult,